this is oil pressure. Pretty low. Hey guys, welcome back. Um, in this uh, episode, I've been having um, seemingly low oil pressure only at idle, which is a uh, pretty common indication of the oil pump, the screws in the back backing out. Um, so I'm gonna uh, just confirm what my inexpensive eBay, eBay gauge is telling me. Um, so I'm gonna hook up a mechanical oil pressure gauge and see if um, if it's roughly the same. If it is, then I'm going to pull the uh, oil pump out and take a look. I quickly removed the uh, belt which reveals the, um, this is the electronic oil sender for the eBay gauge and I just used the stock Subaru plug in a T. Um, you could wire the Subaru pressure switch to have a dash light come on if the oil pressure is really low, but um, at that point you're kind of you're kind of messed up anyway. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to use this port to plug a uh, grease nipple, so like a grease gun nipple extension, a flexible extension, to come out to a gauge. So I'm having some issues with my mechanical oil pressure gauge, so I'm just going to assume that my oil pressure is indeed low at idle. So I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, take off the timing gear and reveal the oil pump and see what we find. Probably the screws on the back are backing out just a little bit, so we'll Loctite those in, get those snugged up, and replace that O-ring as well. One of the things I love about working on Subaru engines in Volkswagens is that you have so much room. You know, you don't have a radiator right here like in a Subaru car. So you can actually access the crank nut real easy. And uh, I've actually already loosened it. And uh, just need to pull this off and get the timing belt covers off. Uh, remove the timing belt after marking, making sure everything looks good. And then. Um, We'll remove the oil pressure pump, or the oil pump. Now that we have the timing covers off, we just need to rotate the engine so that the timing belt marks uh, line up belts are lining up great so I marked the belt going to put it in gear and remove the crank bolt and then uh, start removing the timing belt now the timing belt equipment is uh, removed including the tensioner um, what we're gonna do is remove the crank sensor and then all of the 10 millimeter uh, head bolts I'll leave one kind of in there loose so that we can crack crack the connection it's got RTV silicone all the way around so I've also put a drop uh, oil pan down there to catch all the oil because it's gonna it's gonna leak a lot upon initial inspection nothing looks too bad with this pump um, none of the screws are backing out and the o-ring doesn't look too deformed everything looks okay so what I'm gonna do is actually just swap out this pump for another one and just see um, see what it looks like so I'm not gonna bother cleaning this one up right now I'm just gonna take one that I took off another engine that was running and um, use that one here is a uh, another oil pump that I have um, that was in great working condition. I took the screws and the cover off, and so you can see kind of how it how it works. We've got the um, rotating pump here, and this creates volume, which I'll uh, 
chambers create pressure. So it looks like it's rotating smoothly. This gear comes out and everything looks nice and good with this guy. The only difference with this pump is that it was actually made for an automatic car, so automatic transmission. As you can see, it doesn't have the two um, bungs for the bump guard over the crank gear. You can see right here on this one, this one does. However, it didn't have the bump guard. So uh, I'm going to just go ahead and roll with it. It being a 1993, it's considered a non-interference motor so there isn't a you know necessarily an issue with that destroying the engine but um, if you have a 96 up I would definitely keep a bump guard in there so I'm gonna go ahead and get this guy totally cleaned up and sealed with a light coating of RTV sealant and then installed so I was getting ready to put the um, crank gear back on and found that the Woodruff key was not in the crankshaft. So I took my magnet and went through the oil that I drained uh, from the oil pump and found it. I'm very happy about that. So I'm gonna get this installed. I uh, just thought that was a little cautionary tale. Make sure to uh, keep an eye on this guy. And that key goes right here, and it uh, is a friction fit on this guy. The oil pump went in after putting a little bit of uh, black RTV sealant on it, and uh, just a real light coat. You don't want this stuff squishing everywhere. Um, installed the oil seal and the Woodruff key, and now we're ready to install the uh, crankshaft gear. Now that the crankshaft uh, gear is on, let's get the timing equipment back on. The timing equipment is back in, and what I'm going to do now is rotate the engine two revolutions of the crank just to make sure everything, all the timing marks, line up again. After two revolutions, everything is lining up, so I'm going to go ahead and throw the covers back on. Covers are on and crankshaft pulley is torqued to 125 pounds. So we are now ready to uh, prime the oil pump. However, I am uh, going to wait um, overnight and just make sure that RTV sealant uh, sets up. All right, so it's the next day. I let the uh, Loctite in the back of the oil pump as well as the uh, RTV uh, silicon sealant uh, cure. So I went ahead and disconnected the fuses for the ECU so um, the engine will not start right now. So I'm just going to crank it over for uh, 10 seconds, 15 seconds or so. Alright, so now I'm going to plug everything back in and uh, start it up. Okay, everything's plugged back in. Let's give her a start. Looks like we have oil pressure, so I'm gonna warm it up and uh, make sure that uh, we solve the low oil pressure at idle problem. So after driving uh, the van around with the new oil pump, um, I seem to be having the same issue. So I think that I need to double check that cheap e eBay gauge. I think that might be the source of the problems here. Um, I took apart the old oil pump and everything looks great with it. Um, nothing looks worn. I mean, everything looks okay. So um, that's my next step. I'm just gonna plug in a uh, manual or a mechanical oil pressure gauge and see if I can uh, double check the eBay gauge. I think I may know what's going on here. Alright, so um, we're at about 64 psi oil pressure, this guy. Let's take a walk out back and look at the manual gauge, mechanical gauge. We're looking at about 70 on here, so it's, you know, it's around where it needs to be. But when I flick on the lights, and I 
don't have my alternator connected, that's why, you know, it's showing lower voltage, but when I click that on, look at the dive on the, the gauge, showing, you know, low 50s. Now, when we come over here, it hasn't really changed mechanically, and that makes sense, you know, clicking on the lights wouldn't really change things much. So we're still close to, I mean the oil's starting to warm up now, so we're at about 67, 65 to 70, right in there. So I'm going to let it heat up and just see, you know, what it settles at as we get um, closer to uh, operating temperature. And you can see it's starting to go down now as idle is kind of settling out a little bit, and because uh, I just started it. and. Um, everything's heating up a little. So we're at about 20 PSI, give or take, you know, one or two for the inaccuracy of the gauge here. Uh, let's take a look up front and see what we find. Hey, what do you know? Low oil pressure. Boy. <laughs> that kind of sucks, but just another reason why this gauge is no good. <laughs> you have to actually turn on the lights in order to see the tachometer, which is terrible. And take a look at the oil pressure. Zero. Whoa. And now we're back to five. Okay, so let's summarize what happened here. Um, I was noticing uh, really low oil pressures at idle which is usually an indication of the screws backing out of the oil pump. Um, took all the timing gear apart to access the oil pump. Everything looked great with the oil pump. None of the screws were backing out. I put a different oil pump in just to see if, you know, maybe that would change something. Put the different oil pump in. Had the exact same results showing up on the uh, eBay gauge. Um, I also notice when you uh, put a load on the electrical system, either my heater or lights, the uh, oil pressure would drop, like 10 PSI, something like that, maybe more, 15. And I thought that was very peculiar, especially since I didn't, um, you know, the engine don't doesn't stumble or anything when you do that. It remains perfectly, perfectly normal. So I uh, managed to rig up my mechanical oil pressure gauge using my uh, uh, actual compression tester gauge um, just to see if there were any fluctuations and it, it looks rock solid. So yet another disadvantage of using this cheap eBay gauge. So I'm going to edit my other video recommending that gauge. It fits perfect. I mean, it looks kind of cool, but it's definitely uh, not accurate. So the, the benefits of what we did here are I got to inspect all the timing gear. Everything looks good. Um, replace the oil seal on the crankshaft. So that was good. Um, you know, that never hurts. Plus, I um, was able to do all this, you know, within the matter of a few hours. Um, you know, replacing all that gear. So another benefit is just realizing what a joy it is to work on Subaru engines and VWs, Vanigans or buses. So um, I guess if I'm looking at it um, in a positive way, that's what we found out. So um, thanks for watching. Um, it, kind of a weird video, but uh, hopefully it'll help somebody. And hopefully if they're noticing um, low oil pressures with this gauge um, not to freak out if you're really worried about it get a manual or a, I keep saying manual get a mechanical uh, oil pressure tester um, or gauge of some sort and rig it up and see if the mechanical gauge is actually doing the same thing so thanks for watching and we'll see you next time